Hello, Commander. Lol. <laughs> Good guy, Kazipko. T making sure uh, Azil has his, his Legion actually enabled. Alright, let me close the bet real quick. Attack. What? I hope I'm not under attack. I'm casting. Who's attacking me? I'd be kind of concerned if people were attacking me. This was a bit rushed. I would say so, but that's okay. Um, the planet looks... Well, it looks like you got like a bunch of staplers together and you just kind of started stapling bits of the planet together. But, I mean, I guess that's okay. So, I'm going to hide the chat real quick, guys, so we can actually uh, cast cast the video games. GLHF from Zipco, and let's find their spawns. So. Really? Ah, uh, okay. So, apparently, spawning inside the smiley face is a zeal. Oh, wait, no, so does that mean Zipco made the map? And Azil is okay. All right. Well, I guess this this might be the, Azil's first time seeing the seeing the map. So we'll have to see what happens. So tectonic with about uh, 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 like forty-ish metal split between the two players, like give or take a little bit. But spawning in on the main screen, he is from MIFA, which is a that's that's an acronym that I'll probably never memorize. Uh, we have the number one Uber player, Kazipko. Opening up with a wonderful armory foundry and his opponent spawning in as uh, a nice lavender. Let's go with lavender. That's a good color. Same commander, but different, completely different style of playing. We have uh, the realms Azil opening up with an armory foundry as well. So both players basically doing identical builds here so far. Do we see any sort of variance from the shift key? Well, nope. Looks like we just see a little bit more of uh, the preparation from Kazipko as I think he knows how to play on the stapler map a little bit better. Uh, overall, it looks like a very well-balanced uh, little map here. We've got quite a bit of choke points here, just before, uh, between the players. So you'll definitely, we'll probably be seeing a lot of tanks uh, with bombers here, just to kind of support. As really, I mean, it's it's choke point city. It's it's very nice. There isn't much uh, mobility here, from at least from the looks of it, for uh, peacemakers and or just kind of scurrying units like of the such. We do have the commander reclaim uh, already starting here for Kazipko, which is. It's fairly uh, fairly standard, fairly, fairly a solid, pretty good idea. I mean, we can see the same thing happening to Az uh, Azil's commander, so... Again, nothing nothing out of the ordinary. Very, um... Very, very clean play so far. Fabricator, though, for Kazipko, just making his way downtown. I think we're going to see him pushing to, I guess, the the contention point of the map. Uh, this, this nice little pancake stack here out of the mountains. A little bit of metal on each of it, but uh, I think it's gonna be, it's really going to be these staplers. I think it's going to be these little bits of staple that uh, are really going to you know decide who's going to win this. Now we do have a couple sides, which are basically the um, the legions equivalent to a hummingbird. They are very high powered single target damage uh, anti air fighters, which they do very good work against uh, MLA if you're not careful. But usually in legion games, it sort of does matter who can kind of get the uh, the upper hand first. I mean, it's still an air game, so if you win the air game, you both, you generally have uh, control of the planet until your opponent either matches your uh, orbit, your air factory output, or um, you know just kind of finds a really good trade. Now, taking a quick little look at the uh, bases here, so you guys can kind of see how much effort has been put into this. We have everything that you see here has been either well has been handmade by uh, community mod uh, mod makers of I think five or six different people here so every single individual thing you see from the smoke to the uh, power collectors just kind of outputting their energy has been completely single single-handedly made by uh, players and even the explosions to the jet trails everything was handmade by community members so you know good for them now the first thing that you guys see is we have these cute little uh, pa uh, Patriots coming out which are basically Think of, uh, if you guys remember the spinner from uh, way back in the day before the uh, before the, the terrible, terrible Uber community decided to remove them. 
as the uh, the bots needed something to kind of make them weak and having uh, mobile anti-air tier 1 bots was always kind of scary so we do have a little bit of everything from uh, Zeal Kazipko basically doing the same thing uh, he has some bots he has some vehicles and he has some air and we have the first tier 2 from uh, Azil here getting up a advanced armor factory which is effectively the equivalent of a tier 2 vehicle factory from MLA we have quite a few shanks here which are the equivalent to the ant and patriots like I said which are kind of like uh, if you think the spinners from no, not spinners um oh goodness what are they called um uh, the, the, the little walking bot anti-air missiles. Either way, some Lancers here with uh, these bot fabricators to just kind of protect them. Lancers are very good in high number single target damage, so if you have a commander and you've got about 15 or 16 Lancers, that commander needs to be careful because death will be very quick and inevitable if he is not careful. Now, uh, looks like we've kind of reached the equivalent to the uh, mid-game here as players. the two players are basically starting to uh, kind of get close to each other as the ex expansion has been very good the aggression also very solid and it looks like Kazipko doing very good work on Azil's air army here keeping that that uh, air count very high for himself and yeah it looks like uh, Kazipko does spot this uh, this kind of this push here well, not push but this kind of security detail on these two fabers and he's just not going to be able to push and there are two patriots which will easily keep uh, these two fabers safe and yeah it looks like it just very identical play so far here with Kazipko uh, taking the lead just because of this uh, this top hill expansion here. Azil not, not as quick but I think that's also because he lost his Faber in the uh, early game to uh, the, the rating of the air units. Now here's one of the things that I know Titan does occasionally which is always hilarious and even uh, a few of the pro players is we have to be mindful of if any of the commanders are still getting reclaimed it doesn't look like they are but uh, sometimes when commanders aren't paying uh, too much attention, we tend to see them accidentally reclaim themselves to death, and it's always kind of hilarious and uh, funny. Some air units, though, just flying around, picking off some more fabricators. It looks like, uh, I would assume, Kazipko knows that there are some mines over there, but it doesn't really matter as the staplers, the odds of the odds of Kazipko sending something through these staplers are kind of low just because of travel time is really painful. Looks like uh, Azil, though, does find the entire air army of Kazipko, so the air army hasn't fully reset, but it does kind of bring it back down to being able to scrap it out if the need be. Now, looks like uh, a uh, scrab gonna or yeah it's a uh, scarab going to find some peacemakers and a few shanks here and just quickly shoot down all of these guys really really quickly here and bop 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 now a fun thing about the legion is they are very high damage output uh they are very high damage output kind of race so their strength is very much so in their individual units so if you have a, a scorpion which is the basically the equivalent of a leveler going up against uh, a commander I mean the, the health bar just disappears like it's it's wizard magic man and of course the general damage is just very very strong we do have a few mauls here which are the equivalent to a flame tank except they're a little bit better as they they fire more or less a shotgun round of damage instead of a uh, a flame burst to single target individuals so they will be able to kind of catch some of these shanks off uh, off guard here if they get too too close but usually the shanks kind of know better and they'll just kind of yeah exactly just stay away just shooting from a distance now we do have uh, let's take a quick little look on the back side of the base here Kazipko really starting to expand here kind of really using his air army to his advantage knowing that there isn't anything here he's going to just continue to expand with this one uh, bot fabric here just quickly grabbing all of the economy he can um, Azil though taking a bit of an energy deficit here never anything you want to do but of course he is getting the tier 2 energy and tier 2 metal which will definitely kind of keep him in the game but as long as this economy deficit as, is as as big as it is it's never gonna be anything good it does look like Azil does kind of capture this the king of the hill spot here but at what cost as he hasn't really um, gotten any expansion on his uh, his base here it does look like uh, Kazipko might just start sieging this base here as uh, this hive is going up. Probably going to just start sending some of these free units down here to try and get it out. But the problem is, I don't think that this hive is actually in the best position here. Don't think it's in a relatively safe position. A scorpion, though, now on the field here for Kazipko. And uh, Azil is going to have to back off here. He cannot fight this. This scorpion, the basically, again, the equivalent to a tier 2 leveler. And as you can see, 
The scorpion is a demon. It is it is not afraid to remind you that you are bad, and it will not be afraid to remind you that it is good. Excuse me, a very high damage output kind of individual here, so very good to see from uh, Kazipko here. Some more uh, Lancers and Peacemakers, though, just kind of trading out here on the, uh, I guess, the, kind of the other side of the planet here, as as Yield does quickly clean it up, but that, that energy, there, that me metal deficit getting really, really bad here for Kazipko, he, or Azil, excuse me, definitely needs to continue to expand, but, I mean, the fact that Kazipko is in your base expanding on your metal, I mean, it's just never a good sign here, so... Okay, yeah, this is the okay, yeah, this is this is the middle of the map. I was like, hang on a minute, what's what's going on? Where's the uh, where's the balance in this? Yeah, no, it looks like uh, since since because uh, Azil really didn't kind of you know try and forward cap his metal, because uh, is really taking the advantage of this, and I wouldn't say hasn't fully contained per se because there aren't any units here, but I mean air units here, there's some uh, turrets here, there's I think these are just shanks. Yes, they are just shanks and some scabs. So I mean just you know units here. And now he's going to start pushing in probably from the top of his hill perch uh, very soon here. Now, there is a... Um, there are a few scorpions in this army, and they do... Again, they are basically just like levelers, and they have high damage, or high health and high damage, so they, they do a very good job. Some patriots here to make sure no air units can get near, and yeah, exactly. You better check yourself before you wreck yourself, mate, because these guys do not fear the reaper. Some bombers going to come in here and clean this... Oh, that poor Faber up, and... Uh, it does look like Azil, you know, not down for the count just yet. He is floating on his metal, but you never want to be floating when you're about almost 200 metal behind on your opponent. The side's going to start kind of trading here real quick, and the raider, one of the raiders does go down. I feel like Azil, yeah, Azil should push into this, and I think he, both him and Kazipko kind of know this. The bomber's going to try and get out of the way here real quick, but looks like we're going to just continue having Azil just pushing in at the same time, though. From the uh, High Hill King Perch, it looks like uh, Kazipko is going to just push in and lose a lot of his units to these Scorpions. Same thing, though, about to happen here with uh, Azil if he's not careful. Peacemakers, though, just getting in the front, trying to buy these Scorpions in the back some time, and that's exactly what's happening. Dauntless is going to come in here and maybe pick off some of these units, as there is no AA here. And, ooh, gets four Fabbers for his time. Always very nice from uh, Azil, but, ooh, never mind, that's just a, that's just a Marauder, so... I thought it was a scythe showing up. That would have been really big. Another huge push, though, here from out of uh, Kazipko. And, I mean, this is a base-killing push here. If uh, Azil isn't careful, that is a ba easily a base-killing push, as there is nothing that he has to kind of ward this off. And if he lets his base get exposed, his commander cannot really, you know, take the... Uh, oops, excuse me. He cannot really take the damage uh, like a normal MLA commander normally would be able to. So, with that being said, though, of course, he is going to use the next best thing. He's going to use his bombers, which are very, very, very good at killing off anything besides uh, anti-air. And very good trade. I mean, that was a very good trade from uh, uh, Azil. And if we took a quick little look at the tonal units, I mean, the deficit is definitely kind of getting there. But look at that. It's definitely shrinking between the two players. So, Azil's, you know, staying in this game here. The economy, he needs to get, he needs to get rid of this float. Uh -oh, did he finish it? Yeah, he did finish it. I would think that maybe he needs to get some death marks out, some just kind of general artillery units here, as it looks like um, Kazipko has started to just pull out these hive units, and we might start seeing some hive creeping if he is not careful. The hive always uh, basically... There isn't really anything in the MLA arsenal that does uh, the same thing that, these, that these, this hive does. Basically, it, it's a uh, spawner of locusts. The air units, though, coming in here, trying to get some of these bombers, goes in and dies immediately, so... Azil taking the air game for now, um, and all of this, all of these buildings getting killed off here. It looks like Kazipka's efficiency now dropping a little bit because of the energy deficit that he's feeling. And I think Azil really needs to kind of start using his air army to his advantage. Exactly, start flying around, picking off any metal and or um, expansion that he get, he can get his hands on. Now he does see that there is tier two here. Uh, oh, he does know that there is tier two from uh, Kazipka, so. We'll keep an eye on this army tab. There we go. Cool. So we'll keep an eye on those guys as they're flying around. And it looks like Kazuko is basically just trying to do some just kind of collateral damage. Ooh, a lot of air factories going up here for Kazuko. I mean, this is exactly what he needs to do to try and kill off this uh, uh, Azil's air army. Now, do we see anything coming through the backyard? No, we don't. So, again, Kazipko just really trying to 
I mean, of course, it's, you know, the name of the game is containing your op opponent, and so far, Kazuko does still have him contained. I mean, I wouldn't say Azil's broken out. He's starting to break out, but trying to take, take you know, trades where it's all of these shanks versus just these few shanks and, like, two scorpions. I mean, oh, he did lose his entire air army just by the way. So, you know, it's Azil, he's still fighting. He's definitely still fighting, but right now he is he's bleeding out quite, kind of hard here. Taking a quick little look at the army tab here, we have a uh, mobility count of basically double for Gazipko here. And his Faber is eh, kind of the same thing. But that's not, again, the Faber count really isn't too big. It's really the map control at this point. And we can see everything that Kazip or, uh, Azil has in one one shot here. If I go over to Gazipko's, can't really, because he has some, he's got some expansion over here. He's, you know, he's being very active with his air Fabers, which is kind of the biggest thing is um, Azil really hasn't been proactive with his expansion. He's been just kind of really just playing reactive to how uh, Kazipko is playing. And Kazipko, I mean, he just, he plays so well to that, that, uh, that, uh, that kind of style where he just, he plays reactionary to the reactions of his uh, opponent. And I mean, look at this, he's just, he doesn't care. Sacrificing bombers for some tier two fabbers, that's exactly what he needs to do. Mass sides coming in. Ooh, you do not want to take this kind of trade here as it just gets worse and worse for you. As the uh, sides, again, high damage single target units and now we know at least this time that this this army if it had maybe some patriots could easily get in and do quite a bit of damage but where is Kazipko's air army it looks like it's having a tea break right now at the same time there is another push here for uh, Azil the scabs though trying to just pick off some more of these scorpions the scorpion is very good at just again dealing that high damage single target damage but they still do fall once the numbers kind of start dropping and uh does look like uh, a Kazipko, excuse me, will be able to clean this up very easily. Come on, kill it. Uh oh. Guys, you're supposed to come over here and kill us. Uh oh. One more shot. There you go. Good job. Alright, so those. Looks like the scorpions do finally get pushed off, and uh, Azil does stay alive for just a few more minutes here. More tier 2, though, coming out here for Kazipko, and that's exactly what he needs to just try and kind of put the final nail in the coffin. We do see a tier 2, no, more armor. Do we see any bots? No, no bots just yet, so it doesn't look like uh, <clears throat> Kazipko really feels the need to get any uh, tier 2 bots just yet, so, which is perfectly fine. I would think, though, that maybe some monstrosities, maybe a few necromancers, um, you know, very good tanky units to kind of help just push your units through that, just get that extra oomph. But it does look like uh, we might see some turret creeping here from... Uh, Kazipko from the Navy, which has been slowly building for most of the most of the game here. A Jaeger, I believe. Yep, this is a Jaeger. Think of it as the uh, MLA's equivalent to the Kaiju. Trying to get around this one metal extractor, having the most difficult time of its life. It looks like it's just given up and it's just going to sit next to this metal extractor, contemplating what it can do with its life here. But does Azil have any bombers? Because if he wants to kill this this push here, that's exactly what he's going to need more hives coming out here and this is exactly what uh Kazipko needs to do now it does look like all these little boogers are getting cleaned up very quickly but once that you know once they move in in mass i mean look at these these locusts are just quickly nom nom nomming through everything that uh um azil has in the back door here some more scabs trying to get or scarab excuse me is trying to go up here a mall even trying to get to the front but i mean the mall is just not well mall did a pretty good job there actually one uh, one mall for all of that damage, and the scarab is just continuing to just try and slowly chip down these uh, these lo these hive locusts, just armies. I do believe this is a Theodore, yes, which is the equivalent to the MLA Pelter. So basically, it just lobs shots over all of the stuff and does really good job with that. It does look like though another another few pushes here on the front of uh, Azil as more trading coming out. Actually, do we see a? Uh Nope, just more scorpions and uh, a few mauls. Is that a... Nope, just a scorpion. Okay. I thought we might be seeing some death marks, but nope. Just kind of some basic trading units. And uh, again, another trade here on the pit. Just uh, slowly sw swapping out units. I believe this is this... Oh, no, there are scorpions. So I guess Azeel just has a uh, vision on these units, and um, Kazipko does not. Ironically enough, Kazipko's economy is really starting to tank here as he's just pouring more and more of his economy into just trying to kill Azeel. And the problem with this is, I don't believe he, uh, he sh yeah, he needs to continue capturing this metal. He needs to stay at 100%. He needs to outproduce his opponent because if Azil stays at this uh, greater efficiency, okay, there it goes. It's starting to bring itself back. If, I was going to say, if Azil starts to bring his efficiency back here, 
um, what we might see is just the slow, slow chip of um, of all of uh, Azil's army and that that uh, army graph that we saw earlier. This, which is well, it's still pretty, you know, kind of significant. It might slowly start actually dropping here, which would be absolutely devastating for uh, Kazipko. Now, looks like the Jaeger has finally fi decided to man up and go around the metal tractor, trying to move in on the air factory of um, of uh, Azil here. Um, tanks, you kind of need to be moving. You're you're basically forfeit at this point, and just sitting here, kind of getting killed off, is usually not the best decision. So. Not really the good thing that you want to see. He's even getting reclaimed at this point by the air fabrics, trying to get that metal so that his economy can stay at 100%. And yeah, it looks like the uh, even the air unit is just giving up on those poor units. Some shanks trying to move in and do a little bit of raiding here by uh, Azil. But uh, with usually when your opponent's flying over your base with their, ar their air army, it's kind of the indicator that it's probably GG. But you never know. The snipes do happen once in a blue moon, and you never really know with Legion never really know especially when you've got some uh, shanks that are moving in to your base and if these shanks well no the shanks aren't tanky enough but these scorpions definitely are now if um, if uh, these I mean I don't know we'll have to see these scorpions probably won't get too much done now that they've been kind of spotted here they did get a little bit of metal and some tier 2 for their time, so, I mean, for what they're worth, they were definitely worth trying to fight, but at the same time, Azil still continuing to just try and hold off this just naval issue here. I would almost think that maybe they need, he needs to get some sort of a Gustav or maybe get some radar going. It looks like, though, Azil is just going to now face a bomber snipe by Kazipko. The Patriots are out of position. Azil saying GG, not going to just try and move all of the 15 Patriots he has. And boom goes the dynamite. Azil is eliminated by Kazipko, so congratulations to Kazipko. He will be moving on in this five-man tournament. And congratulations to everyone that bet for Kazipko. Hey guys, it's Ghost here. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like it, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and make sure to turn up that audio because we're about to kick it.